Welcome to Electron Line. Now here's the second part for case two where we're going to find the exact solution right here. Hopefully the square root of six over two times the cosine of theta as the solution to the theta function, the theta portion of the Schrodinger equation solution. And that's the motion in the zenith direction. And so we found that the solution to the theta function is equal to a times the cosine of theta. Now we need to find the value for a, so we have to normalize that, which means that if we then uh, integrate over the entire range of motion from 0 to pi, or I should say from negative pi over 2 to positive pi over 2, matter of fact, we're just going to do half the distance and multiply the integral by 2, so we integrate over that distance and then... Um, we set that integral equal to 1 to have the total probability of where the electron could be in the zenith direction. So now to find the value for a, we need to normalize this function. So that means that 1 is equal to the integral from 0 to pi over 2 times 2, because after all, I'm only going half the distance, so I have to multiply the integral by 2. And then the function will be the function squared times the phi. So this is going to be equal to uh, 2 times the integral from 0 to pi over 2 of a times the cosine of theta quantity squared times d theta. Oop, that shouldn't be a phi, that should be a theta here. All right, now it's actually easier Instead of solving it in terms of the theta function, it's easier to solve it in terms of the f function. So we're now going to make the change. We're now going to say that 1 is equal to 2 times, and I'm going to pull the a squared out, a squared times the integral. Now the new limits of integration in terms of x is going to be from 0 to 1. And instead of having the cosine of theta, we're going to have x squared. Instead of d theta, we're going to have dx. So now we've changed our function to the f function in terms of x instead of the theta function instead of theta. It's a lot easier to work with it this way. And so what we're going to do now is say that this is equal to 2a squared times, it will be x cubed over 3 with the limits from 0 to 1. Plug in the lower limit, you get nothing. Plug in the upper limit, you get 1 third. So this becomes 2 a squared times one-third, and that should equal one. So now we need to isolate a. So we end up with a squared is equal to, let's see here, bring the three across, bring the two down, so that'll be three divided by two, which means that a is equal to the square root of three divided by two. And now if we multiply both the numerator and the denominator by the square root of 2, so this becomes equal to the square root of 6 over 4, and that way you can get the denominator outside the radical, so this becomes equal to the square root of 6 divided by 2. And so that's equal to the value a. Now we knew that the solution is going to be a times the cosine of theta, and a is equal to the square root of 6 over 2, which means that, yes indeed, the solution to our function theta is going to be the square root of 6 over 2 times the cosine of theta in the case where L equals 1 and M sub L equals 0. And that's how we got the solution. And that's how it's done.